If you would turn in your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. As this is part two of a series entitled, The Three Components of Vision. The Three Components of Vision. The first component of vision is uh, hindsight. Winston Churchill said that the farther back we look, the farther ahead we are likely to see. And so hindsight is understanding of a situation or an event only after it has happened or developed. And so there are times that we have to be able to look back and figure out what has happened and where we've come from even to, before we try to move forward in vision. It, 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 you need to discover what has already been. You might create something that's already been around. And uh, you don't want to waste time trying to recreate the wheel if the wheel has already been created. You need to build a platform on those wheels and call it a car and build it into something new. But you'll waste time unless you have hindsight. Confucius said, study the past if you would like to define the future. And the greatest value of the past is as a teacher. We don't dwell in the past, but there are some lessons that we learn from the past. Our mistakes teach us the greatest principles of our success that we could ever hope for. And so you'll always be reminded, isn't it interesting, that you will always be reminded of your past failures by somebody who is intimidated by your present success. Isn't that interesting? Say, I know that person. But if you ever give things, you know, two things, time and light. Time and light both expose. You turn the light on a situation and it'll expose some things, but there are certain things that are never exposed until time exposes it. And that's why patience is a secret weapon that forces deception to reveal itself. So there are certain things that you will never know until you give it time. That's why you don't rush into relationships because you don't know what you've got. You've turned the light on. You might know what they look like in the light, but you don't know what they look like in time. Or I should say more specifically, over time. Time will reveal a dimension of a person that you can get by no other revelation. But time and light both reveal some things to us. And so the first component of vision is hindsight. The second component of, of vision is insight. Insight. We notice from Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 5, counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. It reads this way in the Message Bible, knowing what is right is like deep water in the heart. A wise person draws from the well within. Did you know there ought to be a well on the inside of you? And it takes wisdom to be able to draw out of that well. Have you ever been in a situation where you know stuff and you just don't do it? That's why it says that a wise person draws from the well within. There are a lot of times it's not that we didn't know, it's just that we didn't do what we knew. I mean, I'm convinced that if we did half of the stuff that we know to do, we'd be some bad folks. I mean, if you did half of the stuff that you know to do financially, health-wise, you know, relationship-wise, I mean, you've learned some great stuff if you just tapped into the well of stuff that you know. You've heard some great stuff over time. You know some wonderful stuff. You've been to seminars, you've read books, you've heard this from experience and all of that. And, and so small of a percentage of people act on the stuff that they know, that they actually know. And so insight is seeing from within. It is seeing from within. There are times that you get a perspective that you have to see a thing from within it. You don't understand certain um, organizations until you get in it. You see it from within. You, you, you get in a family, you'll see it from within. You, you don't always know the thing just by looking at it from the outside. You've got to be able to see it from within see it from within. When you come on the inside of it, you'll see some incredible, incredible things just by stepping and getting this internal perspective. There has to be an internal perspective to say, this is what I'm seeing now from the inside. There are certain things that you'll never know until you see it from within. Remember, it's like the man that went to the uh, telephone booth, and you know, this was back in the day when you had a telephone booth that had a, a telephone book 
connected by this metal cord. Anybody remember those? Wave to me if you remember the metal cord in the book. Oh, wow. And so he was standing in the door. It was, it was dusk. And it was a, the, the sunlight was about to go down. He could barely see it. So he's, he's got the book by the cord hanging halfway with the door open, trying to use the uh, light from one of the street lights to illuminate, give him enough illumination to read the number. And a little boy walks by and says to him, Sir, if you'll get all of the way in and shut the door, a light will come on. <laughs> Insight. There are certain things like Christianity. You cannot understand Christianity from the outside looking in. You'll never understand it. Being in another religion, looking at it because you're trying to understand it with an analytical mind. You're trying to understand it by reasoning and by intellect and by debate. You'll never understand religion that you have to get all of the way in, shut the door, and then a light will come on. It's when the light comes on, once you get in, that you get divine insight. Insight. Get all of the way in and shut the door. You'll get insight. And there are times where we won't shut the door on things that have served as a distraction to us. I cannot tell you the amount of revelation that will start flooding your life if you ever have the ability to shut some other things out. Uh, you know, focus is not really about what you tune out, it's about what you focus on and tune in. It's about tuning in. But we have a problem with distracting voices that come from the outside and they, they take us away, pull us away and distract us from the real things that God wants to do on the inside of us. And I'm so glad about the revelation of Jesus Christ that happens within our own hearts because we get into it. We allow him to come into us. St. John 16 talks about how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he'll come into us and he'll lead you and guide you into all truth and he will show you things to come. He'll give you some incredible insight that there are certain things that until you realize that you have an unction on the inside of you. Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't know what to do until you got in the situation? But all of a sudden when you got into it, you knew what to do? I mean, I even saw it when a lady, as she went into labor, she was there by herself, she delivered her own baby. But an instinct will kick in. When you, you don't have time for somebody to wait and explain to you this, there, there is an inner unction, an inner unction. It's called the teacher within. This, this unction, this anointing shall be in you, in you. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you in this day and time, he was already sent. He's already in your life. He's already sent into your life. When he... Men of old, you know, they, they, they would come just on them from the outside, but now he comes up, up, and then on us. It's almost like a, an eruption. He comes up and then on. You know, whenever you get something that really provokes you, you know how somebody can say something and it begins to, uh, I mean, to stir your baby on the inside? You ever have somebody to say something to you and goosebumps to come up on you because something is it's, it's, it's in you? And this thing is coming out of you. There's a difference in, in what's in you that's coming upon you. We need to be able to learn how to draw on this anointing that is in you. You've got an anointing in you. It's a teacher. It's a teacher. He's a divine teacher that will give you insight on the inside. And there are times that he'll wake you up at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, let's have school. And you can have insight. You, he will give you some divine insight. But you've got to be quiet. And that's why he has to come sometimes while your mind is asleep while things are resting because you see when we've got too much going on with our computers and our cell phones and we're carrying all kinds of you know you just got all kinds of attachments to you 24 7 taking things and God wants to lead you into a quiet place whatever happened to Psalm 91 that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him will I trust surely he shall cover thee with his feathers and on his wings shalt thou trust when you come into a secret place of God and, and let the divine teacher, the inner voice of the Holy Spirit, this anointing, this unction shall be in you. When he comes upon you, it's the thing that comes up and then on you. If you ever gotten provoked 
with what I would call a holy discontent or righteous indignation. It's in you. It is in you. Destiny is in you. Destiny is in you. It's not something that you go out into the world. No, no, no. It's God hides it right on the inside of you. And that's why the Bible says you can go to a whole, search the whole world, run and look for him and monks and uh, go all over India. You can go down to Africa looking, trying to find yourself in the kingdom of God. Is within you. The kingdom is within you. It's this this anointing, this unction, shall be in you. That's that's this this still small voice that says, "Be still and know." Don't don't move. Don't go a place. Just be still and know that He is God. He will be exalted among the heathen. He will be exalted in the earth. He is God. Be still. So take a chill pill, just, just stop. Just, you, you've been wrestling, fighting with too many things. Cease struggling. Stop worrying. And just realize that there's a teacher on the inside of you. Have you ever noticed that if you go to a real counselor, counselors don't tell you what to do. They are like a divine obstetrician that are to help coach you in the birthing process of something that comes out of you. One meaning of the word to bless does not mean to put something on a person, it means to release something out of them. And sometimes when a person is pregnant with God's purpose and his anointing on the inside, and, and there have been times when I've just been led of the Holy Ghost to go and lay my hands on somebody and bless them, and the blessing, blessings, when a person gets blessed, it reveals hidden ability it unleashes something and in something it opens something up on the inside so when people come to get a blessing the blessing is not to put the thing in the person it's to let it out it's already been in the person latent it is a latent power it's like potential energy it's something that is dormant as though it were sleep and God will bring a pole into your life and say to Timothy, Timothy, stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of you, that's in you, that was put in you by the laying on of my hands and the hands of the presbytery. And he says, listen, stir up that thing that's in you. And God will use sometimes people to stir something up that's already in you. Have you ever noticed? I mean, every now and then, you know, when I'm on a good laugh, I'll shake up a can of soda and say, hey, are you thirsty? But I've already shaken it up, you know, for the explosion power, you know. And they're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> but see, it's already in them. You don't ever know who is ready to erupt on you. Because you don't know what people have in them. You don't ever know what a person has in them. But this anointing shall be in you. You've got this great teacher, this great power, this great anointing of the Holy Spirit that is in you. He's in you. So, and he gives us insight. And so notice it again in the Message Bible. Knowing what is right is like deep water in the heart. A wise person draws from the well within. From the well within. So insight is seeing from within. Did you know that the word vision and wisdom are actually both sight words? That wisdom is a sight word and vision is a sight word? 